Most Pokemon can learn a wide variety of moves. Most water types can also learn ice moves, ground types can learn rock moves, Nidoking can learn, like, everything, and so on and so on. But today, let's look at... Basically the opposite of that. What's up, fellas? I'm Matt, and Elias and I have a ton of examples of Pokemon that can't learn moves they really should. Alright, let's get started. What's up, fellas? I'm Elias, the new champion of Hoenn as of last week. In Pokemon Y, Clauncher's Pokedex entry says, Through controlled expulsions of internal gas, it can expel water like a pistol shot. At close distances, it can shatter rock. Alright, it can obliterate rocks. Cool. Then why can't Clauncher learn Rock Smash? It's not a good move by any means, but come on, man. Can it only smash rocks when nobody's looking? Am I supposed to want a Pokemon with Stage Fright on my team? This isn't a move Clauncher or Clowitzer could ever use in a serious battle, but it makes perfect thematic sense. Next up, Seedot can't learn Bullet Seed. Yeah, that's not true, but man, could you imagine? Anyway, Growlithe can't learn Growl. Uh. This one just makes absolutely no sense. It's literally got Growl in its name. This is one of the most infamous missing moves in Pokemon, so there's a good chance many of you have heard about this one. But that doesn't stop it from being one of the most egregious examples. The first stat-lowering move, there's a plane flying over my house. I don't hear it. Yes, you do. The first stat-lowering move Growlithe learns has always been Leer, because of course it has. Again, not a move that makes a huge difference in the grand scheme of things, but Pokemon has been around for about 834 years. Surely somebody at Game Freak must have noticed by now, right? Most Pokemon associated with the moon or nighttime can obviously learn the move Moonlight. Lunatone, Cresselia, Lunala, Blood Moon Ursa Luna, Clefable, Umbreon, Belossum. Wait, really? Blossom, the Pokemon that evolves with a Sunstone, can learn Moonlight? We'll get back to why in a second. But Noctowl can't learn it. Its name comes from the word Nocturnal. It's described as the Emperor of Dark Nights, and it can learn Moon Blast, but not Moonlight. To be entirely fair though, Noctowl isn't missing out on much by not learning Moonlight. It's got another healing move in the form of Roost, and that's a much more reliable move because it's not weather dependent like Moonlight is. So it's not the worst example in this video, but it's still pretty weird. Oh, actually, while we're at it, guess what? Blossom's Pokemon Pokedex entries talk all about the sun, it evolves with a sunstone, but it can't learn morning sun. The same way moon-related Pokemon can learn moonlight, most of the sun and daylight-related Pokemon can learn morning sun. Solrock, Solgaleo, Espeon, and so on and so on. But for reasons unknown to everybody except some silly little guy at Game Freak, Blossom only gets the nighttime version of morning sun. Now I'm not saying Blossom shouldn't be able to learn moonlight, that move is just a carryover from its pre-evolutions. Oddish and Gloom have always been able to learn it, so Blossom can too by default. But surely it couldn't hurt to give it morning sun as well, right? Don't call me Surely, Matt. To be fair though, Morning Sun and Moonlight are identical moves. They heal half your health by default, but they heal more in harsh sunlight and less in every other weather. So Blossom learning Morning Sun wouldn't actually make any difference. Next up, Ambipom can't learn Tail Slap. Great. Just fantastic. The Pokemon with hands for tails can't use them to slap. Ambipom's category is the long tail Pokemon as well, but apparently those tails are no good in combat. But you know what it can learn? Water Pulse, Grass Knot, Solar Beam, Thunderbolt. So it can do all this other nonsense, but it can't slap with its tails. Awesome. No wonder Smogon says don't use Ambipom. That's not the reason. Please tell me it learns Tail Whip at least. Oh, thank god. Revivroom is a pretty cool Pokemon if you ask me. When I first played through Pokemon Violet, I was surprised when I got to my first team Starbase and I realized I had to fight the car. Yeah, I accidentally fought Giacomo out of order. Whoops. But despite being a car slash engine Pokemon, Revivroom can't learn U-Turn. It's a bug type move, but it doesn't really have that strong connection to insects. There's plenty of Pokemon that aren't bug types that can learn U-Turn. Cinderace, Luminion, Eradicate, the list goes on. A U-Turn is something you can do in a car, so it would make perfect sense for Revivroom to get the move. If the bicycle Pokemon can get it, I think the car Pokemon should as well. You know... After I learned how to drive, driving through New York, I realized that a lot of humans can't learn U-Turn either. Uh, that's tr so true. I haven't learned how to drive. I haven't bothered. While we're talking about Revivroom, though, why does Ortega's Starmobile know Steel Roller? His Starmobile's ability is Misty Terrain, which makes sense for a Fairy-type base. But then by using Steel Roller, Ortega is getting rid of his own terrain. In fact, the move straight up fails if there's no terrain on the field. So by using this move, Ortega is actively sabotaging himself because he's powering down his own fairy moves. And it's not even like the other Team Star bosses use the move. Ortega is the only one that uses terrain, and he's the only one who can actively get rid of terrains. He's also the guy who created the Star Mobiles in the first place, and yet he's somehow the worst at using them. Why not pick a weaker steel move? That way, he could use it more than once, and he'd still be powering up his fairy moves. But, oh wait, 
he does have another steel type move. Ortega buddy, what are you doing? We're getting off track here. This next one is kind of a wild card, but hear me out. Executor can't learn Tri Attack. Most Pokemon with three hats can learn this move. Dugtrio, Magneton, Hydreigon, Iron Jugulus, Sandy Shocks, Dodrio, all of them can use it. Not gonna lie, there's more three headed Pokemon than I thought there were. Anyway, Executor is one of the few that can't learn Tri Attack. The move is described as a simultaneous three beam attack, so it makes sense that most of the three headed Pokemon can learn it. All three hats attack at the same time with a different element. Fun. Heck, even though Duo can learn it, even though it doesn't have its third head yet, but that's besides the point. On a similar note, the three-headed Combi can't learn Tri-Attack either, but that's mostly because it can't learn many moves at all. Its entire Gen 9 learn set is just eight moves, and half of them are Bug-type. In fact, it was incompatible with TMs entirely till Gen 8. You could also argue that it shouldn't learn Tri-Attack anyway, since it can evolve into Vespaquin, which only has one head. But Magneton is in the same situation. Magnezone only has one head, but it learns Tri-Attack by level up. As long as a Pokemon has three heads at some point, it seems like Tri-Attack is fair game. So if somebody at Game Freak woke up one day and decided to make Combi usable for whatever reason, Tri Attack would be a logical move to give it, in my humble onion. Whoops, quick addendum. This wasn't in our outline, but I went and double checked. Wug Trio can't learn this move either, even though Doug Trio can. So there's a last minute entry for you. These aren't the most egregious missing moves by any means, but I thought it was interesting. Wug Trio. Yeah, Ew. Wug Trio. It's like. <laughs> Why is it white? Why is Wiglet white and then they invert the colors? I don't know. We're Dragapult learning things a... today. <laughs> All these interruptions, I can't deal with it. Dragapult is a dragon Dragapult slash... Dragapult is a dragon ghost type. I deserve that. Dragapult is a dragon slash ghost type, so as you might expect, it can learn the move Dragon Claw, but this isn't the moves Pokemon can learn because obviously they can video, so why am I bringing it up? Because it can't learn Shadow Claw. So you mean to tell me that despite being a ghost type and being able to learn another stab claw move, it can't use Shadow Claw? Here's a bunch of other Pokemon that can learn Shadow Claw. For Alligator, the Elemental Monkeys, Cubchoo, but not Dragapult for... who knows what reason. The list goes on and on forever, and somehow this guy isn't on it. Heck, Charizard was able to learn Shadow Claw by level up for a few generations. Because that makes sense. It actually does make sense, Matt, because Charizard is like a big dragon, and as we know now, dragons don't exist, so they may as well have been ghosts, and so you can argue that dragons are like a shadow in our imaginations because they never existed, but for some reason we all know what they are, and then and, and then like Charizard can learn Shadow Claw. Shut up, nerd! <laughs> Nihiligo's category is the Parasite Pokemon. Its Ultra Moon Dex entry says it lives by feeding on people and other Pokemon. In Pokemon Sun and Moon, Nihiligo physically merges with Lusamine before your final battle against her. After you defeat her, they unmerge, leaving Lusamine unconscious. So I was surprised to learn Nihiligo can't learn any HP training moves. The Parasite Pokemon can't attack like a Parasite. No Giga Drain, Leech Seed, Strength Sap, Leech Life, any of that stuff. For the longest time, the physical ice type move options were kind of underwhelming. Icicle Crash has a 30% chance to flinch, but only 90% accuracy, and as we all know, if a move isn't 100% accurate, it's 50% accurate, blah blah blah. Ice Fang and Ice Punch are pretty weak, Avalanche is unreliable, and Icicle Spear is unreliable for different reasons, although you can make it work with Loaded Dice or Skill Link. So most physical ice types used Icicle Crash because it was the least bad option, and the flinch chance is nice. But then in Gen 9, we got a new physical ice move. Ice Spinner is 80 power and 100 accuracy, so it's basically an ice type version of Poison Jab. It also removes terrains from the field. Can Poison Jab poison? Yes. Can Ice Spinner freeze? No. You're wrong. It's ice just spinner a different is secondary effect. Like it's poison fine. Jab. Ice Spinner is nothing <laughs> like Poison Jab. Disgusting. It's the same power, it's the same accuracy, so shut your mouth! But despite being a TM, Ice Spinner's distribution is pretty limited. There's only 50 or so Pokemon that can learn it, and Baxcalibur isn't one of them. Gen 9 introduced a handful of ice types with weird move restrictions, and I'll get back to you later. The move's description doesn't make it sound like something Baxcalibur shouldn't be able to do. Spin around and slam into the target. Easy. It does make sense on round Pokemon, like... It does make sense on round Pokemon like Satitan and Jigglypuff, but if Great Tusk can learn it, surely Baxcalibur should as well. Don't call me Shirley, Shirley. Right, so now's a good time to talk about the actual legendary ice type, Chen Pao, which uh, Elias just looked up like five minutes ago. 
I, I know I know Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one of the only Ice type Pokemon that can't learn Ice Beam. The other two are Rotom Frost and Snom. Rotom Frost can't learn it because upon transforming, the Rotom appliances only get one move of their new type. Rotom Wash gets Hydro Pump, Rotom Fan gets Air Slash, and so on and so on. Rotom Frost Ice type move is Blizzard, and regular Rotom can't learn Ice Beam, which means the Freezer can't use it either. Snom can't learn Ice Beam because it's Baby. Here's this entire learn set. It's all good. It evolves into Frost Moth, which can actually learn stuff. Chen Pao can't learn Ice Beam just because. Now, Chen Pao is pretty specifically designed as a physical attacker. Its attack stat is higher than its special attack, and its ability sort of ruin lowers every everybody else's defense stat while it's on the field. So not learning Ice Beam isn't really a hindrance or anything, because it's always going to use physical moves like Ice Spinner. But when basically every other Ice type can learn the move, I'm surprised Shen Pao didn't get it for completion's sake. I'm going to leave that voice crack in there, screw everything. Chi Yu is the special equivalent of Chen Pao, and it can still learn physical stat moves like Flare Blitz and Crunch. It's never ever ever going to use them in any serious game, but Game Freak gave them these options anyway. Rocket is a pretty good ability, because it prevents Pokemon from taking recoil damage from attacks. That means Hisuian Arcanine can throw itself at anything that moves with no repercussions, using moves like Flare Blitz Blitz risk-free. Aerodactyl gives Rockhead 2, but it can't really take advantage of it. The only recoil move it can learn is Takedown, which is an awful attack. It used to have Double Edge as well, but not since Gen 3. And that's a real shame, because Aerodactyl is a rock flying type, and both of these types have recoil moves. Aerodactyl can't learn Head Smash or Brave Bird. You could argue that Aerodactyl isn't a bird, so it shouldn't get a move of bird in its name, but Crobat can learn Brave Bird, and it's pretty clearly not a bird. An Aerodactyl is close enough to a bird that I think we can let it slide. Pterosaurs are ancestors of modern birds the same way dinosaurs are. Nuzleaf's name is a combination of Nuzzle and Leaf. It's got a leaf on its head, and the Pokedex says it takes the leaf out and turns it into a grass flute. The, the move Pokedex. Grass Whistle seems like it was- Sorry. <laughs> What? You wrote, po you wrote Pokedex. Aww. You have to you have uh, to read it like the script says it, Matt. I don't know no, what to tell you. No, I don't. You know how much I ad lib. The move Grass Whistle seems like it was practically made for Nuzleaf, but you already know what this video is about. Nuzleaf can't learn Grass Whistle. Are the melodies it plays not pleasant enough or something? Huh, I guess not. I don't think it would be a huge stretch, though, considering it literally plays a Grass Whistle. All right, let's do a bunch of moves rapid fire. Pikachu's Pokedex... Pikachu's Pokedex entry in Pokemon Yellow says that if you yank its tail, it'll bite you. Pikachu cannot learn bite. It can learn like every other move in the universe though, so who cares? Despite being a poison type with fangs, Ariados can't learn poison fang. Rayquaza is the master of the weather trio, so it can summon any weather, except hail or snow. It wouldn't ever use these moves because it's already got a terrible matchup against ice types, but still. Machamp has four arms, so you'd think it could learn multi-hit moves like arm thrust and comet punch, changing arms for each punch. No dice. At least it can learn Mach Punch now. Remoraid's category is the Jet Pokemon, and it can't learn Aqua Jet. Cool. Togepi can't learn Egg Bomb despite literally being an egg. Foretris, yeah that was correct. Foretris can learn Spikes, but not Spike Cannon despite being based on weaponry like turrets and, you know, cannons. Despite being a... Why does it say Fire type in my script? Who's writing this garbage? Oh right, it's me. Despite being a flying type Pokemon, Gyarados can barely learn any flying type moves. It can't learn Fly, Brave Bird, Aerial Ace, Air Slash, Sky Attack, Acrobatics, any of that stuff. In fact, it didn't learn any flying moves at all till it got Bounce in Gen 4. Before that, it had to use Hidden Powers as Flying Stab, which requires you to lower your IVs. To this day, the only other flying move Gyarados can learn is Hurricane, and it's never going to use it because its special attack stat is so low. So Gyarados has to use either the Unreliable Bounce or a flying type Terra Blast in Gen 9, which doesn't become flying type unless it terastalizes, and you can only use Terra once per game, so using it on Gyarados so often would be less than ideal. Plus, Terra Blast is almost definitely not surviving past Gen 9. There's some flying moves that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense on Gyarados, like it shouldn't be able to learn Brave Bird, but then again Crobat still isn't a bird, so maybe we could get away with that. Wow, I'm getting a lot of mileage out of Crobat in this video. I'd probably give Gyarados Acrobatics just so it has some kind of reliable flying type option, even though you need to sacrifice your item slot to maximize its power. And to continue on the Crobat train, Crobat can also learn Acrobatics, which I think is cool. Acrobatics is a fun move, I like it a lot. And that's not the only time Gyarados has had underwhelming stab moves. Mega Gyarados was a water dark type introduced in Pokemon X and Y. Unfortunately, in those games, its only physical dark moves are Bite, which is weak, and Payback, which is also weak, unless it's lower than its opponent. Thanks. 
Fortunately, Gyarados got Crunch and Oras, so its Mega Form actually had a decent Dark Stab to use. And on that note, let's change gears, shall we? Let's take a look at moves the Pokémon used to not be able to learn. Let's get two of the most famous examples out of the way first. Lickitung couldn't learn Lick until Gen 2, and Charizard couldn't learn Fly until Yellow. Great, now let's take a look at the legendary birds from Kanto, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. All of them can learn Hurricane nowadays, but Zapdos couldn't learn for a while. Zapdos. Zapdos. Zapatos. <laughs> All of them can learn Hurricane nowadays, but Zapatos couldn't for a while. And I would argue that Hurricane makes the most sense on Zapatos, compared to Articuno and Moltres. Thunder and Lightning can occur in Category 4 and 5 Hurricanes, so it all fits with Zapdos' electric typing as well. It's possible that this was a balancing thing though, because by the time Hurricane was added, Zapdos was pretty clearly the best of the legendary birds in battle. It's consistently been one of the best non-box art legendaries competitively, meanwhile Moltres is alright and Articuno is usually hot garbage. Actually, Articuno is usually cold garbage, oh, but Elias, you're bad. anyways, learning Hurricane makes Zapdos even better on rain teams because it can also learn Thunder and both moves bypass accuracy checks in the rain. But in any case, Zapdos finally learned Hurricane in Gen 8 alongside the Galarian Birds and it never looked back since. Despite being based on a wrestler, Halucha wasn't able to learn a couple of wrestling moves for a while. It couldn't use Submission till Gen 8, and it couldn't use Body Slam till Gen 9. Are these moves game-changing for Halucha in any way? Nope, not really. Submission is a terrible move, and you're better off picking moves that aren't normal type, so Body Slam isn't a great option either. But they make a lot of thematic sense if you ask me. Upon further review, Incineroar still can't learn Submission. Great. As the box legendary for Pokemon Shield, Zamazenta obviously has high defensive stats. Unfortunately, it couldn't really take advantage of it, because among other reasons, it can't learn any reliable recovery moves. But more importantly for this video, Zamazenta couldn't learn Body Press in Gen 8, a move that calculates damage with the user's defense stat as opposed to their attack. Body Press can be learned by a lot of big beefy boys, but apparently the big beefy boy whose whole thing is defense couldn't. But it's all good, Zamazenta got access to Body Press in Gen 9. It's still one of the weakest box legendaries of all time, but hey. It's doing its best, it was dealt an awful hand. Matt, that's a comma splice. Who cares? Mischievous' Pokedex entries talk about how it causes chaos at night by just... screaming. So you'd think it could learn a move like Hyper Voice, which is described as a horribly echoing shout, but nope. It didn't get this move till Gen 9. I spit on my microphone. <laughs> Good. I wonder if Fluttermane can learn this move. Oh good. If I asked you to picture a hippo, there's a good chance you're imagining one bathing in mud. That being said, Hippowdon couldn't learn Muddy Water till Gen 8. Again, not a move it would ever use in any serious battles on account of a slow special attack stat, but that's not what a Pokemon's learn set is all about. It fits thematically, so it makes sense for Hippowdon to learn it. Next up, Power Gem was a Rock-type move added in Gen 4, so you'd think a Rock-type whose name comes from Diamond could learn it, right? Well, for whatever reason, Diancie couldn't learn Power Gem in its debut generation. It had to wait until Gen 7 to get the move. But you want to know the weirdest part? Carbink was always able to learn Power Gem, and Diancie is a mutation of Carbink. So upon mutating, it loses access to the move. Welp, that's all we got for today for the main video. But we're starting something different today. A new show after the show called Me Played Games. We've gotten a ton of comments from people, saying how much they like the banter between me and Elias. So after each video, we're going to keep the conversation going, with a short 10-15 minute mini podcast sort of deal. Click the link on the end screen here to see an unlisted video, where we'll talk about how we became friends, as well as the origins of Me Plays games. In the future, we'll talk about other stuff. If you've got any other Pokemon move combinations that should or shouldn't exist, leave them in the comments, and we might make a follow-up video. We'll see you all next time. Good night, fellas. Sleep well.